Please subscribe to this channel for more videos related to Catholic Christian teaching. The First Vatican Council teaches that God is infinite in His will. Sacred Scripture sees in God's free will the ultimate basis of the world order. Whatever the Lord pleases, He does, in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all deeps, and considers the will of God as the supreme norm of morality. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. The fathers defend the freedom of God's will against the fatalism of the pagans. As God is pure act, there is, in His willing, no transition from potency to act, no habitus, no sequence of individual acts of will, but one single successionless act of willing. His will, by virtue of the absolute simplicity of God, is factually identical with the divine essence. Just as His intelligence is His essence, so is His will. The things external to God are not determining reasons, but merely the goal of the divine volition. God's absolute fullness of being excludes concupiscible love. God's ardent longing for the salvation of mankind is an expression of His beneficent love, which shows itself in the communication of benefits to creatures. The basic affection is love, which in God is factually identical with His essence. God is love. Among the other affections there is in God, in infinite intensification, that of joy or bliss. All blissful in Himself and from Himself. As far as hate is concerned, there is in him, on account of his absolute holiness, the hate that is abomination towards sin, but not the hate that is enmity towards the person of the sinner. The Lord abhors bloodthirsty and deceitful, for you love all things that exist and detest none of the things that you have made, for you would not have made anything if you had hated it. Our affections such as longing, sadness, hope, anger can be attributed to God only in an anthropomorphic sense. Anger in sacred scripture means the punitive justice of God.
the primary and formal object of the divine will and of the divine love is God himself. The First Vatican Council teaches he loves himself necessarily. Sacred scripture bears witness to the fact that God has coordinated the whole creation to himself as its final end. The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. The object of the divine will is his own goodness, which is his essence. Speculatively, the love of God for himself and its necessity arises from the fact that God is the supreme good and that he, in his comprehensive self-knowledge, completely knows his infinite amiability. From this knowledge, there necessarily flows the infinite love of God for himself. The secondary and material object of the divine will and the divine love are the things external to God. The First Vatican Council teaches that God called into existence all creatures by a most free act of the will apart from any necessity. With absolute freedom of counsel, by an act of will, free from all necessity. Sacred scripture stresses God's love for his creatures. For you love all things that exist and detest none of the things that you have made. God's love for his creatures is a pleasing love. That is, God loves creatures insofar as they participate in a finite manner in his perfections and have their final end in him. Further, God's love for creatures is a benevolent love. That is, God loves creatures not with a receiving but with a bestowing and therefore a most unselfish love. God's love is not motivated by the creature's goodness, but is itself the cause of that goodness. The love of God infuses and creates goodness in things. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. The degree of God's love for creature is one and the same in the inner divine act. In the extra divine created effect, however, it is different according to the grade of its amiability. Physical evil, for example, suffering, illness, and death, is not willed by God per se, that is, not as evil itself or as an end. Because God did not make death, and He does not delight in the destruction of the living, for He created all things so that they might exist. God, however, wills physical evil, both natural evil as well as punitive evil, per accident, that is, as a means to a higher end of the physical order, for example, for the acquisition of a higher life, 
or of the moral order, for example, for chastisement or moral purification. Good things and bad, life and death, poverty and wealth, come from the Lord. Moral evil, that is, sin, which according to its nature is a negative of God, is willed by God, neither per se nor per accident, that is, neither as an end nor as a means to an end. The Council of Trent has condemned as heretical the contrary doctrine of Calvin, for you are not a god who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. God merely permits sin because he has consideration for man's freedom. It was he who created humans in the beginning and he left them in the power of their own inclinations. And because he possesses the wisdom and the power to cause good to arise from evil. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. In the final end, moral evil will serve the supreme aim of the world, the glorification of God, inasmuch as it reveals His mercy in forgiving and His justice in punishing. Please go to YouTube Retirement Mentality channel, playlist, Dogma on God for the complete series of these materials.